Welcome to tutorial two of the Bird's Eye Paver Estimation Tool, More Advanced Layout. To start out with, we are selecting a lot width of 100 feet up in the top left. And then we will save as to save our project. In today's project, we will create a 25 foot by 40 foot patio around a swimming pool, and then a path leading to a fire pit area. When drawing square or rectangular shapes, we can use the snap to grid option in the top right corner of the graph paper. This option automatically snaps the line to one foot increments. To draw our first patio, we will use the square drawing tool, although a straight tool could also be used. After clicking the start point, we can drag the square shape out to the dimensions we desire. To create a 25 foot by 40 foot patio area, we pull the opposite corner down and then away. As before, we then select a paver style for the shape, and we can add two layers of border for the perimeter. Now, to create the swimming pool area, we will use the object or blocking tools to create shapes that are subtracted from our paver areas. This could be a swimming pool, a grill, or any other structure that will be taking up space. Going up to the light blue object tools, we could draw our pool with either a straight line or a square shape. Since I know the pool is 12 feet by 30 feet, it's easiest to draw it using the square tool. Because we are working with a smaller space now, we could use that orange zoom button up in the top right corner to get a closer look. Now as we draw the shape, you can see the dimensions inside as we expand it. We can now label the pool by selecting the shape and then clicking on Label. And we could also change the color here as well. Any object which is a non-paver area can also have a border. In this case, we will add a border around the pool. This can also be pool coping if that is included as a border. Now I will demonstrate how to draw a path that is meandering from the pool area to a fire pit. One of the great features of this tool is that when you draw shapes that are overlapping, it will automatically subtract the overlapped area. This way you don't have to be exact when joining shapes together. In this case, we can start drawing our path using a straight line tool from anywhere inside the pool patio. Once we extend it out, we can then right click and change our line to a curve or select curve from the green tool menu. Using the curve tool, we can then create a serpentine shape. Once we get to the end of our path, we right click again and select convert to path. It then will prompt us to input the path width, which the user inputs in either feet or meters. Again, as with the other paver areas and objects, we can add a border and label it. Next, we can use the circle drawing tool to create a fire pit area that will be at the end of our path. We can click anywhere on the page to start drawing, and by holding down that left mouse button, you can drag the circle shape out. As you can see, the circle radius is dynamically shown in the circle as you expand it out. When the desired radius is achieved, let go of that left click button. Again, we can select a paver and a border that we want to use. These could be any different combination from what we have originally selected. By clicking anywhere within the circle, you can now move it to the location it belongs. As mentioned, you can overlap shapes, such as the circle over the path. It does not have to be exact. Once you have moved the circle into position, you can right click on it and select bring to top or send to bottom. This feature allows the overlapped shape to move above or below the conflicting shape in the quantity calculation. It will also subtract the overlapping lines automatically. We can now go to the blue 
object tools and select a circle to represent the fire pit in the middle of this circular paver area. Again, we can draw the fire pit object anywhere and then drag it into the patio. By doing this, the area of that fire pit will be subtracted from the area of the patio, and we can also put a border around any object as mentioned before. Now that we have our plan done, we can quickly label each of the paver and object areas that we need to. Once we have done this, we can select Quick Estimate and see our quantities. Each paver and border area are summarized, and total material bundles are provided. We can then select Create Report, which generates a complete report you can print or save as a PDF. In many cases, a landscape plan may already exist. In the next tutorial, we will show you how to simply import a PDF or any file into the Paver Estimation tool so you can trace the existing landscape plan. Thanks so much for watching tutorial 2 for the Bird's Eye Paver Estimation tool by Reese Stone Systems.